What's going on, Fight Fans? This is Capital Combat. Name says it all. I'm Rob Jarrell. And uh, I am here to talk about the preview for this coming, this weekend's upcoming fights. Um, we have on Friday, Cuban, Sullivan Barrera taking on... And I don't want anyone... Okay. <laughs> Ukrainian, Vyacheslav uh, Sobransky. Um, in a light heavyweight tilt. Um, and this looks like it's going to be an eliminator for the, I think this is a WBC. This is going to take uh, one of the regional titles for the WBC. And I think after this, they are, um, they're, they should fight the winner, fight whoever has the WBC belt. If I'm not mistaken, that is, I think it's, um, Adana Stevenson. Yep. It's Adana Stevenson. And they should get the next crack at Adana Stevenson because um, Elida Alvarez, he just uh, beat somebody in Nor Nebrowski. I don't know. It, it was a showcase day, busy fight. And he was in line to fight Adana Stevenson. But instead, he's going to fight um, Lucian Butte, who's moving back up to 175 for, the, um, for fighting Canada. Okay, um, I don't know why Alvarez would give that up. Maybe it's just more money in that instead of with uh, Adonis Stevenson. So I think the winner of this is going to, uh, Sobranski Barrera is going to fight Adonis Stevenson or should fight Adonis Stevenson um, after this because Adonis Stevenson is still inactive. He just doesn't fight for whatever reason. He doesn't fight that often. I'd be surprised if he fight twice a year. Um, but we're not here to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that in another video. So um, we got uh, two guys in a light heavyweight division. One has fought Andre Ward. The other is um, working his way up um, to get a shot at the title. Um, and they're both tall guys. If I'm not mistaken, Chabransky is 6'3". Yep, he's almost 6'4". He's almost my height. I'm 6'4". And... Um, and Sullivan Barrera, I believe, is 6'2". Yeah, you got two two guys, um, extremely tall. Uh, Vyacheslav Sobranski has longer reach, but I think Barrera is uh, physically going to be the physically stronger guy. He's more muscular. I think he has a bit more power. Sobranski only has... I take that back. Sobranski has been really... Taking it to BB, he has 14 KOs, uh, 17 and 0 with 14 KOs, while Sullivan Barrera 17 and 1 with 12 KOs. But I have to take a moment. I'm um, I'm look at their I'm looking at their uh, their records. Um, I've kind of been watching Shabransky since the Fabiano uh, Parker fight. Fabiano Pina, uh, he fought Paul Parker after that. I don't remember those names. Those, to me, are nobody, even the guy who was undefeated. Um, so he's going to have a more glossy record, but he, he he is very good. He has some holes, but he has shown that he every fight he gets better and better and better. Barrera, and his best win is Uneski Gonzalez. He's beat Derek Finlay, um, Finley, but his best um, win was Uneski Gonzalez in a very – High impact, high action fight, which he won uh, with the majority decision, which I think he got a lot from that fight. Um, he was really forced to fight for the first time uh, that I've seen. And um, he's got some good power. He's getting better with that jab and being able to maintain distance. And uh, he's active. The good thing about him is that he's active. He, he um, doesn't rush as much, but he will throw more punches, um, and he commits. Whereas Sullivan Barrera has had his best competition was against Andre Ward, but his best win was his, um, was his knockout by, versus uh, Kara Murat. Um, and Jeff Lacey, uh, and that wasn't even a good win because Lacey has been past it for quite some time. Uh, I saw that and I was like, this is, this is sad. Um, so, uh, I talked to Akeem about this one, and if you had to pull our arm on this one, um, we're taking Sobranski in a very close fight, um, not quite as, 
high impact as I would say the um, the uh, Gonzalez fight was for Shabransky, but um, Sullivan Barrera is a strong guy. He's big. He's strong. He has very good skills and a very good jab. He landed that jab versus um, versus Andre Ward very well, but he hasn't been as active. He hasn't fought since March when he lost to Andre Ward. But I think he's learned a lot of things from that fight. Um, he, and I don't think he's quite as fast as Sobranski. Sobranski is not only fast, but um, he has more activity. And I think he'll be the aggressor. I don't think Barrera is going to be as aggressive though enough to really offset what Sobranski does. Um, but I kind of want to see what happens when they actually land. Uh, Ward wasn't really, he knocked him down, but he, that was more of an off balance. Um, I caught you slipping punch against, um, across the, uh, across the dome while Shabransky, I think, um, I think he'll be more aggressive and I think it comes to who can take whose power better and who can land in those clean power shots. Um, and I don't think it's going to be as much as a battle of a jab. I think it's going to be a, a battle of mentality. Because one, this is a win uh, for each one of these guys that's going to elevate them to the next level from um, no longer being a prospect to either one, but to be a real serious contender. Um, it's no shame when Barrera losing to, um, to Ward. And he's had a knockout streak um, and retired streak before that. So... It's going to be interesting to see. I want to see who's hungrier, who can take who's punched better, and who can nullify what the other one does well. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. I'm going to go Sobranski in a close fight. Um, there's going to be some nip and tuck rounds. Um, I think Sullivan Barrera will land the harder shots, but I think um, Sobranski will, will land the... Uh, the shots that are kind of more there and flashy, and I think he'll start accumulating more and win rounds uh, due to activity. Um, but yeah, I just want to see who pushes who back in this fight. That's the biggest thing. Who can push who back? Who is mentally stronger? Who can um, who can instill their will? And who wants some more? Um, but yeah, I, I would like. And Abel Sanchez is working with uh, Sullivan Barrera, so we're gonna see if he improved and see what new wrinkles that they've learned from the Ward fight. Um, and that's on Friday. I think there is someone else on that card. Uh, nope. Uh, check out Eddie Gomez and Ronnie Rios versus Roy Tapia. That should be a pretty decent scrap. Um, and that is on HBO Latino. John Pascal is actually returning. If you want the website, that's punchinggrace.com. He's, um, this is his comeback fight, but he's fighting at Cruiserweight. All right. So, December 17th, we have the HBO card, um, which is Bernard Hopkins versus uh, Joe Smith um, in a light heavyweight fight. We know Joe Smith, we last seen him knocking out Andres Fafara in the first round. So we really don't know exactly what he can do if you ask me. Um, he's a hard puncher, but Fafara was pretty much all over him in that fight. Um, yeah, he was just all over in, in, in that fight. And it's... Uh, and he just got in. He got the punch that he hit, get in. And he's fighting Bernard Hopkins, who uh, Bernard is one of the greats. He's one of the legends. Um, he's done a lot. At, he's done his thing at 175. Surprisingly, um, we last saw him and his loss to um, Crusher Kovalev, which, again, it's nothing. He was just outclassed, outboxed. He made him look old and inactive. And Crusher just did his thing. He uh, took him 12 rounds. That's the only real thing you could take out of that fight. But he, but Bernard Coppian said that he saw the openings. He just couldn't pull the trigger. And him being 51, that is the worst thing for him to say in a fight. He's never been stopped. 
But that's the first thing. That's the worst thing you say in a fight like that. He's promised this is his last fight. He's the executioner again. Maybe that's a change in mentality. Maybe he becomes more aggressive or he instills his experience over the experience of Joe Smith, who has the youth advantage um, and the power advantage. And we've seen him nullify power. But can he pull the trigger? I think Joe Smith wins. It's hard to call because you don't know what B-Hop you're getting. It's been over years since he fought, so he might be fresher. Um, he might be ready, but does he age in this fight? If it goes 12, I think he ekes it out, but there's a distinct possibility that he's he's forced to fight. Maybe he doesn't have the legs. Maybe he doesn't pull the trigger. Um, maybe he just gets old. I think this is a, a very, very, very winnable fight for Joe Smith. The only thing is it's a winnable fight for Bernard Hawkins because of the fact that he skill wise, experience wise and knowledge wise, he's leagues ahead of Joe Smith. And in Joe Smith, I'm going to be honest. I don't think he's had a really big, um, other than from far, which is best win. You really didn't get but so much from that. And I know that sounds awful. And I'm kind of, look. I want to bring up his, because I've only seen like two of his fights and I can't remember what freaking fight that was. Let me see who he's fought. Because he's 22-1. and one. He has one loss. The loss was early in his career. And I'm looking at Fabio Pena, Will Rosinski. I mean, these are mid-level to low-level guys. Otis Griffin, Michael Gabinga. Those are guys that, um, if you're any good, you're supposed to be. Now, he's won plenty in a row. He lost to a nobody early in his career. He knocked out Andres from far, but I mean, we don't really have enough to say that he can that he can beat a guy who's seen a who's who over the last twenty something odd years. So tell me what you think. I I'm still up in the air. It'll. I'll put my, my official pick on Facebook. Is it Capital Combat on Facebook? Um, because I, I need a little bit more thought about it. I just think, does he get old? And does Joe Smith uh, look like he's a fluke against a guy who is at least B-level and from far? Um, on that same card, we have Jojo Diaz, who is um, who's going to be featured on there. That should be a good tune-up. In his uh, matchup versus uh, Horatio Garcia, yeah, who's only got one loss, and that's for a featherweight title. And after this, we should be seeing him fight the who's who of featherweight. And I'm talking about we just um we just saw Abner Mares fight um Cuellar. We're getting Frampton versus um Santa Cruz. We know that um. We know Lomachenko could possibly move down if he wanted to. Um, we know um, Gary Russell Jr. is there. It's There's plenty of fights, and he's undefeated. So, yeah, it's... You know, Jason Velez is still hanging around. It's so much there that can be said. And just to kind of go and look at uh, those rankings in the divisions... Or some of those guys in the divisions for um be better for me, right? Is that, this is the, I this is freaking the hate face uh, this computer when they pull up the videos. Like I don't want those videos. I mean, yeah, you're looking at Gary Russell, Lee Selby, Oscar Valdez, Scott Quick, Sipiwe Vidyeka, Oscar Escadone, um, and then there you have Jojo Diaz at Featherweight. That's a deep division. And if Lomachenko decides he wants to come down from 130 to 126, that makes it even more wide open. So I ha hope after this he takes this step up um, and fights somebody on those names that I've seen. Oscar Escondon would be a great name to put on there. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But moving on, I, I don't want to stick with this too much longer. Then we, um, then we have Alexander Usyk. Versus Tapisu Mishuno. And uh, Usyk is the medalist out of the Ukraine. These Ukrainians are pumping out some great fighters, by the way. Um, between Lomachenko, we know 
Um, we know Lomachenko. We know Usyk. We know Shabransky. Um, you know the Klitschko's are from the Ukraine. So, yeah. Um, these guys are pumping out. And this is for the WBO Cruiserweight title. We have Tabisa Mashuno um, against Usyk. And I got to, unless Mashuno can get inside and make himself very wily, make himself a small target, and um, keep himself from being hit by such a much bigger, much nastier, much more skilled, in my opinion, Usyk, then we have a fight. But Usyk is 6'3 with a 78-inch reach. Sabisu Mishunu is 5'11 with a 72-inch reach. Those are what you see on super middleweights. And he lost to Lunga and Makabu, lost his title, but then he came back with a decent win. Um, so his best win is probably Eddie Chambers and Garrett Wilson. So, yeah, unless he can make himself a small target, get in, be slippery, hit him with some counter shots against Usyk, he's going to get outboxed. Now, he may not knock him out, but we're talking about a guy who came in, he beat Glowak, Gl Glowaski out of Poland. Feel free to, um, to correct me on that. Um, then he's got some other good names in Brewer, and he's... He's a powerful punch. He's 10 and 0, but he has nine knockouts. And that was against a guy who was actually a champion in Glowaski um, that he did knock out. Um, and Tabusa Mishunu is not a knockout artist. Uh, he's 17, but he owned 17 to 2, but he has 11 KOs and he's lost by two KOs. So you got to knock this guy out, and the guy can be knocked out. And my man is out of, um, but he's a southpaw. So that says a lot. It might be. He might present some problems to um, Usyk that we don't express, but I think Usyk's just going to be too big and too skilled for Mishunu. Um, yeah, so we're moving on. And one last thing we want to talk about, uh, Paveka and Alexander Paveka and Bermain Stavern are fighting for, um, as an eliminated uh, take on Deontay Wilder in a heavyweight tilt. Uh, Povetkin's promoter won the purse bid, so that, that should be taking place in Russia. Um, and I got to take Povetkin because Verbeis Stavern is more of a counter puncher. And I, again, I talked to Hakeem. Um, Povetkin is more aggressive. Um, he's bigger. I think he's more skilled, but... Remains to burn when he's on and he's actually in shape and ready for fights. Shows that he can he can go with anyone. He um he knocked out Chris Ariola twice, um, but he show he has shown lapses in his fighting, um, and also he's just not active. And the biggest thing that can hurt him is just not his activity, not having any activity. But with Vivekan, we just need to see how he will respond because he got popped for Meldonium, which they canceled the fight with Wilder, but he's been allowed to fight. There's not enough evidence to show that Meldonium really could have affected him um, or enhanced his performance. It's just, it was newly banned. We're going to overlook like that's come and gone, whatever. But I just want to see what kind of, it depends on what guy shows up in this fight. Um, yeah, it, it shows, it, depending on who shows up better in this fight, who shows up, because Pavekin, I know, can get out of shape sometimes, but he has the skill. He has the skill. He has the power um, to fight and win. But he kind of went up against it with Marius Wach. Um, of course, he fought Klitschko. And it's another guy who, who doesn't fight as often as you would like him. This is his first fight in 2016. He fought twice in 2015, twice in 2014. So about twice a year is his, his, his thing. But um, I think he wins this fight. Um, Bermain Severn has actually shown to have a really good chin. So I don't think he's going to knock him out. They're about the same. I take that back. They're about the same height. They're about six, both 6'2 six and... Um, Crap, they, Mace to Burn has a longer reach. 
Whew, these are some difficult fights to call. If Bermain Stavern shows up in shape, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long day for Pavekin. But whoever shows up non in shape, if they look heavy or um, out of shape, that guy's going down. But I just think Pavekin has had the better competition. Um, and he's going to be able to bring more to the table with his experience. Uh, remains to burn. His best opponent was Deontay Wilder, who he lost to by unanimous misdecision. Um, so me and Hakeem, we talked about it. We're going to take Usyk. We're going to take uh, Bebekin. We're going to take... Um, we don't know about Benel Hawkins, Joe Smith Jr. And Shabransky should win with the activity as well. Um, I'm picking the European guys. Um... But it might not. It might not go the way we. It just depends. There's a lot of variables with a lot of these fights. We got two hungry guys. We got two other guys who depends on who co comes up in what shape. Um, and we got to go from there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, say something in the comment section. Hit us up on Facebook, um, Capital Combat, Instagram. Capital Combat Google Plus, Capital Combat email us, Capital Combat at gmail.com. And um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, definitely like and watch the whole video. We got more coming for you. We've got some changes. We got some new things coming up in 2017. So until next time, everyone, fight on.